Hey everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we are going to be learning about BGP. Uh, today is going to be a fundamental BGP session and what we are going to be looking in this session, we are going to be looking at what is BGP. We are going to be looking at the fundamental building blocks of BGP is understanding path attribute categorization, can BGP routing lead to loops, how do BGP routers interact with each other and finally we are going to look at IPv4 configuration in Routerverse v6 and Routerverse v7. So there is a difference between the configuration in Routerverse v6 that we have been doing and Routerverse v7. So let's get into it and let's understand these differences and the fundamentals of BGP. So first let's look at what is BGP. BGP is Border Gateway Protocol. This protocol is a standardized protocol used to distribute routes and primarily it is used in internet environment that is the public domain environment and it is a path vector protocol meaning the routing decisions are based on the path of the prefix and this path information gets updated dynamically. BGP is used to interconnect to ASS, ASS autonomous systems. Autonomous system is nothing but a collection of routers within an organization. Why is BGP required? BGP is required because it's a scalable protocol. We cannot communicate with the other AS or other organization using IGP protocols that is interior gateway protocols like OSPF, EIGRP because they are not scalable as they cannot handle huge amount of prefixes that BGP. BGP is not primarily only used for interconnecting of AS. It can be used as an IGP protocol in internal BGP that is the session is created internally within the AS Primarily the BGP has been used for as an exterior border gateway protocol that is eBGP that is establishing between two ASs. So what is AS? AS is autonomous system that is a collection of routers of an organization. Each organization is given an ASN that is autonomous system number which is assigned by RIR which is regional internet registries. For example APNIC in Asia Pacific, AFRINIC in Africa and so on and like IP addresses AS numbers are also private that is these numbers do not get broadcasted in the public domain that is the internet so these numbers are primarily used within the autonomous system that is for IBGP purposes and the range that these numbers fall in are 64512 to 65535 and the 4 byte that is the new one has numbers from 4.2 billion upwards to the last number that is 4294967295. As I told you BGP is a path vector protocol and the path attributed that is associated with the prefix is used to install the best route in the routing information base that is your route table. The path attributes that are associated with the prefix are of two categories mainly they are well known category and are optional category well-known category are known by all the BGP peers and optional category may or may not be known by the BGP peer. They are subdivided that is well-known mandatory is something that is required with the prefix to come in when it is advertised to the peer so that it can be installed otherwise the prefix is discarded and then there is a discretionary category which may or may not be sent to the peer but the peer will understand it because it is well-known and if it is coming with the prefix then the path attribute is used to make a certain decision whether the route has to be installed or it does not have to be installed. In case of optional attributes these path attributes may or may not be known to the peer but if they are coming then they can be of sub two categories that is transitive or non-transitive. If it is transitive then that's a persistent attribute that means when it crosses that AS the attribute will remain when going to the third AS or the fourth AS or the fifth AS that will not be lost in the transit but if it is non-transitive then what will happen is the AS that is going to receive it is going to make a decision on that and then that attribute will be removed. So let's switch to the whiteboard and understand how BGP prevents loop using an attribute which is AS path. So consider this, router1 with AS100 advertises a route to router2 with AS200. 
and in turn router 2 advertises it to router 4 with AS400 and so on and so forth the route is advertised to all the routers up till AS300 but AS300 is also paired with router 1 and it advertises the route back to AS100 what happens then this will create a loop in the network that is the prefix that has been advertised by AS100 is going to come back to it from AS300 and this may cause some problems correct actually no in BGP this does not happen we'll understand it why so BGP uses a path attribute AS path as I told you so when the route advertises from router 1 to router 2 and router 2 receives it the AS path of that prefix is 100 that means to reach that prefix router 2 must reach AS100 subsequently when router 2 advertises it to router 4 it prepends this AS path with its own AS so router 4 now reaches router 1 prefix through router 2 that is from AS200 it reaches to AS100 and this is something that goes on as the route is advertised forward to each of the BGP peers finally when the route comes to AS300 and it retransmits it to AS100 something happens AS100 sees that in AS path there is already AS100 existing so immediately the route is rejected and this way BGP prevents a routing loop in the network but how do these routers communicate with each other so BGP communication happens over protocol TCP and on port 179 and unlike IGP which communicates on multicast BGP communication happens with the TCP connection routers do not send any hello message like they do in IGP therefore we have to manually configure the neighbor using IP addresses and because BGP uses TCP and not multicast it can cross network boundaries that is a neighborship with a router which is multi hops away so this TCP connection that is formed the communication that is happening between the BGP peers is basically four messages are being transferred the first is the open message and this is the first message that is sent to establish the adjacency or the peership or the neighborship between two routers and to keep this neighborship alive a periodic message is sent between both the routers to inform each other that they are there still because BGP doesn't rely on TCP connection state so this keep alive message is sent periodically between the routers to inform each other that yes they are still there and the neighborship should continue periodically the peer that is the neighbor might withdraw a route or prefix or might want to add a new prefix and this is sent through an update message so the update message is sent to an peer informing them there is a change in the prefix table that I want to send it to you and the neighbor performs certain action after receiving the update message and in the end if there is an error or there is a capability change in the neighborship or there is a connection problem that has come the router sends a notification to its peer informing that I cannot maintain this connection anymore and close it down so that is sent through the notification message so these are the four messages that are sent by BGP to establish to update to keep that connection or to remove that connection so let's get into a simple BGP configuration on one end we have router OS v6 and on another end we have router OS v7 so first let's look at what we are going to configure in router OS v6 and then we will look in to what we need to configure for router OS v7 and we will look into how to troubleshoot and how to see different aspects of BGP or the connection established connection in both the routers again this configuration and everything I'll be posting it on github so don't worry about it you don't need to copy anything or pause the video I will post this on github along with my GNS3 project in which I have done this so that you can download and you can play around with it you can test it out and everything so on router OS v6 that is on the left hand side what we have done is we have created a bridge with LO that is the loopback interface 
and we have assigned it an IP address of 172.16.1.1 and both the routers are connected on 10.0.0.0 slash 30 the router on the left that is router OSB6 has 10.0.0.1 slash 30 IP address on Ether1 and there is a LAN IP address of 192.168.10.1 slash 24 on Ether2 so in router OSB6 for BGP routing first we are creating an instance that is AS100 instance that is the AS of this side of the network that is left hand side and the router ID is 172.16.1.1 then we are creating a network that is the network that we want to advertise and in the end we are creating a BGP peer and we are using the instance AS100 that we used before the remote address is the address of our peer the remote AS is the AS of our peer that is the router is V7 and the name that we are going to give it is something that we can recognize is clearly that is peer 200 that is we are peering to peer 200 so to debug and to check BGP configuration on router OS v6 the best thing is to to check if we are connected first by doing a router BGP peer print and we are what we are looking for an E and to see what we are advertising to up here we are going to be looking into router BGP advertisement print and for more granular debugging we can use system logs uh, by uh, logging BGP topic by echo or by memory whichever is convenient to you I find echo very convenient because it can print directly onto the console so let's get into our router and see this in action once so on the left we have router OS v6 let's first look into that and uh, let's do routing BGP peer print so we see that the connection is right now established e e denotes established and let's look at the advertisements that we are doing so routing bgp advertisements print and we see that we are advertising 192.168.10.0 to our uh, peer peer 200 that we are connected to that is 10.0.0.0.2 and like i said to do more granular uh, debugging you can use system uh, logging and here you can create a topic say BGP and uh, you can do action echo and this will lead to BGP being echoed directly onto your console anytime there is an update anytime there is a problem the BGP is going down everything is going to be printed on the console so right now what we see that the keep live was expired and uh, a remote message was sent and if the reply came the BGP session will be maintained so while the BGP session is established this console log may not help you a lot but if the BGP session is not maintained this console log will help you a lot so you can use console for your debugging purpose when making the connection so let's get into router OS v7 configuration now router OS v7 the configuration is very different to what it was in router OS v6 yes the initial configuration that is the configuration of the bridge that is the loopback address the always up interface is the same and the ip address assignment is also the same but here we are using the ip address 172.16.2.2 for our loopback address for our wan address we are using 10.0.0.2 and for our internal that is the LAN address we are using 192.168.20.0 series and in router OS v7 what we need to create is we need to create an address list inside IP firewall that we need to advertise so here I am creating an address list that is BGP underscore advertise and the address that I want to advertise is 192.168.20.0 slash 24 so in router OS v7 we don't need to use instance and peer we can do it in a single line so we are doing is routing BGP connection the AS is RAS that is AS200 on the right hand side we want to connect and we want to listen to any incoming connection also so you can do connect no but then it will not connect but you can do listen no this is the same as passive in router OS v6 the local role that we want to play is ebgp this is the new thing that has come out 
there are different rows ebgp and ibgp are the most common things that we are going to be using there are many other roles also we'll look into that in a later video the name that we are going to give to this connection is peer 100 and now comes the object creation that is the remote is the object the address for that is 10.0.0.1 that is the left side ROS v6 the AS for that remote object is 100 that is again ROS v6 the router ID for our current router that is the v7 router is 172.16.2.2 and the output network is bgp underscore advertise that is the IRP firewall for address list that we had created up and this is the network all the IP prefixes that are there in BGP underscore advertise are going to get advertised. Here I would like to point out one thing to you that in router OS v7, there is no concept of synchronous like we had in router OS v6 for advertising the routes. Only the prefixes that are installed in your rib, that is your routing information base, are going to get advertised, others are not going to advertise. So if you want to originate some routes and you do not want to install it on an interface, you can create a black hole static route. And the debugging on a router OS v7 is much different than router OS v6. The first thing is that we cannot see the peer as there is no submenu of routing BGP peer. The new menu is routing BGP sessions. So we'll see what are the sessions and again we are looking for E that is establish. So currently there is no way to see what advertisements router OS v7 is doing. I think this is still in development and it will come out shortly. And for debugging purposes again we can use system logging that is very very helpful. So let's go and see in GNS3 router OS v7 in action. So let's open router OS v7. And we are going to be doing routing BGP session print. So here we see that the routing session is established with the remote peer 10.0.0.1. The AS for that peer is 100 and the router ID for that peer is 172.16.1.1. We see the E flag here that is the established flag. Further on we also see that the local object that is the address, the AS, the ID is all of our router and we see that we are advertising network of bgp underscore advertise we can see this by ip firewall address list print so we see that uh, bgp advertise address list has been created and that is advertising 192.168.20.0 slash 24 currently so this was the basic bgp that we established between router OS v6 and v7 and this is the basic building blocks of bgp that we learned today that's it for today's video i hope that you enjoyed it please press the like button and also please do subscribe to my channel to get the latest updates until we see you later goodbye